it's very difficult right now. I'm I'm dealing with a lot of things uh, in the channel around <laughs> yep. because um, a lot of people are picking up on these negative beings that are spreading all this confusion. So right, yeah. For me, it took a lot of time to process the change, but I think I. <laughs> I did this wave of processing, processing so I uh, I finally got to my old self, like today. Oh, good. Or last night. Last night I just realized, oh, wait a second. I am back to my usual way, usual ways. Good. Obviously, it's like uh, the waves of tra transformation come and people need help to process a change because the change is huge. Yeah. Like it's rediscovery oh. of yourself every day. Yes, and plus the government is changing. Yep. Um, the government is definitely changing, and um, it's going to not be. This is the. This may be the downfall of the United States. It may go to a dictatorship now. Um. Because he's already acting like a dictator. He's not following any of the rules of the presidency. He's not r responding in the ways of any other president in the past. He's doing whatever he wants, and he's getting away with it. And that is the way of a dictator. He's already suggested <coughs> election be postponed. When is the election? November. It makes sense. The thing is, if it's postponed, it will never, it will never happen. I see, but it does make sense because you need time for the campaigning, and there is no time for the campaigning. I think the virus so will. He, he will just take over then. Yeah, the virus will um, seize uh, sometime in the summer. I think most likely like July, August. Uh, so there will be like three months for campaigning. The thing is, if he, if the election is postponed, it will never happen. <clears throat> um, right. And that is not a good thing. That's the end of this democracy. Right. It's so that's a very me. troublesome point as well. It's foreign to me, so I, I, I cannot really have an opinion on that. It's just uh, something weird. I don't like it, but I like the people, and I like some of the fruits of it. But uh, obviously, it's pretty rotten. Yes. I'm, I'm very frightened for the future. It's a, it's, I see a lot of things happening that I've never seen before ever in my life. And even since I've been a channeler, things have changed so much this year. I It's amazing what is out there now. So much darkness, so many negativities. It's hard to channel without bringing some of that in. And I don't want it. But I it's see. very difficult because it's everywhere. Right, right, right. So and I trying to stay, stay pure and trying to stay integral and it's wow. It's they're really infiltrating everything possible. And uh they try to imitate everyone. So I I it's frightening. <clears throat> you have right. no idea. Right, right, right. It's very, very scary. For me, it was... Um, it's the second time I go through that. And in Russia, we, we, we went through the fall of the Soviet Union. It was pretty much the same thing. And uh, people didn't die from hunger. They died from uh, not being able to find themselves in a new place. They just couldn't reinvent themselves. So it's ability to 
change yourself and you know, drop whatever doesn't work and find the new ideas. True. But when there's so many subtleties out there, there's very subtle changes. A lot of people will be confused by, by that if they don't have a lot of intuition. They need to have some intuition about what is happening and how it's happening. And fortunately, I do know how and and why and all those things that I've been watching carefully. But I will be able to adapt. It's just a scary time. Yeah, as um, as an, as Aquarians, we are pretty flexible, and we catch we catch opportunities, and we yes. catch we catch uh, new waves because as soon as things are breaking, there is lots of lots of new opportunities. There are new opportunities, but you just have to be careful that they're not uh, tainted. Be careful, because some of them look great, but they're not. So just be careful. <clears throat> there is a, a very big, there's a very big movement right now to destroy the ascension process and it's it's already been slowed down by the coronavirus and that since it's been slowed down by the coronavirus they're attempting to stop it completely with all this uh other stuff that's coming out and many people many people say oh no they're the uh, ascension's been sped up by the coronavirus because people are staying home, meditating, and doing all these things. But they're also looking at all the uh, negative things online. They're looking at all these negative messages and conspiracy theories, and that is pulling them down and not not pushing the 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 timeline forward. It's it's diluting the ascension process, and so. We need more purity in this, otherwise it's it's a problem. Now, the ascension is still going to go on. I believe that, but it's not it's not going to it's not going to proceed in the same way. It has to change. <coughs> it has to change in its process and its delivery. And so, I know that that is something that not everybody sees, but. It is definitely true, I believe. <clears throat> With the changing of the government and everything, it's it's also changing everything that people see and hope for and want. There's a lot of people there that are seeing what I see uh, in the government category, and <clears throat> they're not very happy about it at all. So it's, it's a very... Ugh, I, I try to keep very positive. <laughs> it's very difficult sometimes, though. But because I'm sad. But I'm also, I'm also having to move forward in a very positive way, so. Keep my prayer life up so that everything is okay. And I have to keep myself in check so that I'm doing the right thing and channeling the right thing and feeling the right things and knowing what's right for me for today. Yep. <clears throat> I'm reading biographies. I have read biographies. Actually, I didn't listen to any audio books since the thing started because there is so much to process. I don't have uh, time to process external things but before that I was listening to lots of biographies and um, Yogananda's autobiography and Gandhi's biographies and Churchill's biographies and um, basically how does Gandhi like a saint connected to the divine how does he go through lots of historical transformations because at the end of his life it's not that it was outside of him it was through him that it happened it was whatever he did 
affected directly the the history of India and uh, his decision or his indecision caused uh, a lot of bloodshed in India, like millions suffered or even yes. died. millions died because yes. of his choices. <clears throat> and the same thing with Yogananda. He was not as influential, but he went through several wars and uh, transformations. Right. The- and be- because of their decisions, other people suffered. This is true. Um, especially Gandhi. Because his whole country, uh, they they wouldn't, they didn't understand what he was doing or why he was doing what he was doing. It wasn't out of weakness necessarily, but it was out of strength of what he believed. And he eventually won, if you if you come right down to it. He actually was successful in what he wanted to do through his means, even though many suffered and died. Mm-hmm. He was a success. But some would say no, he wasn't. But he was. But basically, I mean, the key point was um, the Congress, he was undeniably the leader of the Congress. And the progressive Indians wanted to take the power from the English and, uh, and rule. And he refused, basically. <clears throat> he just delayed and delayed and delayed and blocked all the actions. And the peaceful transfer of power wasn't, didn't happen. And as a result, we basically India fell apart and it lost Pakistan and um, Bangladesh. And there was like a big um, fight between Muslims and Indians and they separated. Until then, under the rule of British, they, they lived together. But when you have no strong ruler, they started fighting. They had to like split. Right. So there was a lot of split there. While right. India is, uh, is used to living intermixed. Lots of different castes live mixed together. Correct. So that was his choice. But he was like, he didn't even <clears throat> consider doing otherwise. No. So. This is belief, yeah. So for him, it was like, you know, he was guided, I guess. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, you know, you cannot really like, he didn't show any hesitance, basically. He just knew what to do, and he did it without even hesitance there. Right, exactly. Because he knew what he thought was, he knew what he knew was right. <laughs> and so he did what he knew was right. <clears throat> And for Yogananda, the same. He basically, at some point, he says, it's all illusion. You, you shouldn't worry about... It's like uh, the main topic of Bhagavad Gita. The, you shouldn't worry about seeming death because it's all an illusion of death. Yes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so that... the Bhagavad Gita is very interesting. Yes. So basically, it comes to the idea that, you know, staying high and... Um, being true to your own uh, truth and uh, let the outside energies just pass around without messing up your own vibration. Yes, that's perfect. Yeah. It's actually perfect for this time, day and age because a lot of people are influenced by what they hear. They should grasp onto their own truth which they know to be true since they were, since they were young. And it was uh, some of the truth that they gather, they know that is uh, just here, no, just here nor there. They should let that go and grasp onto the basic truth of what they believe in and in themselves and in the world. And they should let everything else go because everything else is inconsequential at this point. But they're making everything have meaning, and it's not that way. I don't know how to say it right, but I think you know what I mean. They're putting too much faith in things that they don't even know what they're putting faith in. 
<laughs> so they have to be true to themselves. They have to be true to their own thought processes, their own truths. They have to be true to their own truths within themselves. So I, um, for, for the time of like last three weeks, I wasn't able to do my science well. I did it reluctantly, basically, f half an hour a day. While my worker was working full time, but I was basically catching up with what he was doing without able being able to fully fully engage. But finally, like last two days, I I'm coming back to my science because I think it's it's important. It's um, it will have a chance to shine through. People people now because they dropped all everything non-essential. They um, Pay more, much more attention to real things. <clears throat> of course. So, whatever I say is now much heard much better. People pay attention instead of looking at it for entertainment. They look for for, for answers, which is great. <coughs> for essential answers, and yeah. um, so my science is moving forward. I still need to publish my main discovery. Like I just I published a little bit, but uh, the main thing is pretty much ready to be published. I just need to clean it up and publish. And we have lots more coming. <clears throat> I had to fire my, basically, how do you, downsize, I fire my worker, main worker, because I just don't have money to pay him. So I have, out of three people, I have one working. Um, but the, the one which is working, it's a new guy, and he is... Um, excited and he is a good programmer and thinks very well but good. he cannot communicate it's just a disaster he i have to really like intuit what he's saying to me because it's like complete um, um incomplete it's, it's always incomplete and it just uh, he's somewhere in his world and it's hard for him to to communicate he's not a communicator <clears throat> well, that's often the case with some very highly intelligent people. They are connected to their work so strongly that they are not connected to uh, people. Right, right. They're connected to their work, so right. they don't know how to communicate properly. All right. But you know, we're moving forward. We're seeing some signals, and we're trying to figure out what they do, what they mean. Yep. yep. <coughs> so, they're more interested in the com in their work than the communication. We got it, into numerology of DNA. We see um, nice jumps in the DNA, which are like 74, 84, 60, 140. No, and, uh, I forgot the other numbers, but uh, 60 is a great number, right? 60 mm -hmm. is, a, is an amazing number. And mm -hmm. uh, 84 is a very interesting number. Number seven comes up in DNA a lot, and it's really hard to to trace where from does it come and what does it do there. But um, because it's the spiritual number, I, I didn't expect myself ever to go into numerology. It was like the boring, the most boring for me um, of their esoteric things. But here, here I am doing numerology on DNA. But I'm trying to figure out the uh, biophysical. I think numerology is necessary for DNA because it's it's put together through the matrix. God God has a matrix out there, and the DNA, all the different DNAs are put together through that matrix, and it's all algorithmic and it's all numerical. So, I think that the that answer is too. Yeah, answer. that is too. But we are still looking at resonances and basically any oh yes mm -hmm. any, any divisors of the number are <clears throat> called harmonics. So we are looking at resonances. So numerology can be physically explained why it is there. Exactly, <clears throat> because everything breaks into numer numbers. Everything yep. you can put numbers on everything. But Every also, kind of energy is n numeric. Also, numbers are broken in waves. Yes, exactly. or combined in waves or Express, yes. expressed as waves exactly another That's, go ahead god expresses himself that way yes another update is um uh, uh 
so we develop the device, they produce the device, light therapy device. And last night the, the data came out, the novel data, that COVID works not through lungs, but through blood. Uh, lungs basically fail, not because they are clogged, but because the blood is not, uh, is messed up. The blood doesn't transfer oxygen anymore. So it's a blood problem, not a lung problem. You, you right. still can help the lungs by giving oxygen, but uh, he says, uh, the doctor says that the muscles of the lung breathe, uh, contract just fine. So the mechanics works fine. You don't need to help the mechanics. Uh, it is the blood that is failing. And that, so that's why that's why people with sugar diabetes and high blood pressure are higher risk. Ah. is because it's a blood issue. So, um, the, and the paper came out yesterday confirming that on molecular level saying that, uh, you know, blood chemistry is messed up by the virus. Now, we know from the past uh, that light therapy helps blood a lot and it helps uh, to restore the ability of the blood to transfer oxygen. And uh, even a Nobel Prize was given for that. So our device which we developed is um, a great candidate. And any other light therapy devices with red and infrared light, they should be able to help a lot, help a lot. Basically you need to give yourself like almost the whole day of light. Or maybe even even coming out to the sun would also help. But um, if red, red light for certain. And um, that's a great opportunity to treat the disease and I just wonder how to proceed from that point. We just realized that a few hours ago, but apparently red light is cool and um, I already ordered online the um, uh, a bigger device which they use, they make the devices to grow plants with red light. Yes, I saw, and they're just I saw. perfect. So that you can buy a bulb for $40, you can buy a bulb and just shine it on yourself and cure uh, and get through that period of low oxygen. And uh, you, I've seen those, I've seen those plant lights and they have blue in them too. Blue lights as well. I'm not sure if blue would, how blue would react on, on, on blood, but there, are, there, there is a variety of red only uh, uh, and there is a variety of red and infrared. Uh, that would be the best. 660 yeah. plus 850 nanometers there on Amazon. In great numbers, so I would. Um, eight sixty. Six sixty plus eight fifty. Are there no. two two different wavelengths? Six sixty is the main one. Eight fifty is a good addition. Just 60, just pure red is sufficient. Uh, blue right. uh, blue doesn't hurt. Uh, I just actually there is some research that blue kills infections, but I'm not sure about specifically the effect on the virus. But red for sure. A red right. would improve the blood and you know you would just shine it on yourself all all the day long it doesn't go through the cloth and you have to be like on on the skin it go, should go on the skin okay well that's why i bought the flat one which you can just put on yourself and uh, it has a nice fan so it cools itself <clears throat> very good cool where do you buy those um amazon amazon what are they called? Plant lights. <laughs> uh, yeah, LED panels, and there is a word for that, which is grow, grow light, grow light. Grow lights, okay. Grow light. Maybe I'll get one. Uh huh. Uh, I will send you a link. Or, or, All right. Or the lamp. We'll see. I will send a you a grow lamp. lamp. Would be good. I have friends that have uh, in their living room. They have a lot of cactus, and they you they have grow lights on both sides of the room growing the cactus so here you go just uh, be there and you'll be fine just be naked and um, sit next to the cactus be naked and sit next to the cactus Ooh, yes they could just don't interact with the cactus <laughs> right <clears throat> have a cactus on your lap yes heck it. <laughs> interesting enough with that group of people their dress code is nudity. They like to be naked in their house. So, perfect. When you go there, they are sometimes naked. Perfect. And you go, hmm, interesting. But they don't think anything of it. So, anyway, 
So they must be doing some really I, good. I used to go naked in the house, but my uh, kids, as they grow up, they just don't like it. <laughs> they don't like it. <laughs> well, hey, they, yeah, I, I can understand that, I guess. I, I probably wouldn't have liked it if my parents went naked in the house either. So, yeah, probably not. All right. A um, couple more topics, right? Um... Yeah, something was coming up, but uh, it was um, wiped well, um, out with the idea of nudity, yeah. Yeah, with the idea of nudity? Yeah. I think that actually that gives the body a chance to breathe. And and I like, I've been to nudist functions before. I have no problem with that. Um, I didn't think that I would, My I had a friend that said he was going to a nudist function and I was going, I don't know if I want to go. He goes, oh, come on. If you don't like it, go sit in the car. So I went to the function, and after five minutes, I felt all right. I was comfortable. So it was not that bad. So, it, And in, in fact, I felt sort of free. It freed me up from, you know, I could see everybody else, and clothes didn't matter, um, you know, Sometimes clothes matter because you see somebody wearing really nice clothes or somebody wearing uh, shabby clothes and you make an, an immediate impression of them. But if they're not wearing anything, you have to go by what you hear them say and how they talk and all these different things that makes a different impression on you than uh, social clothing and all that would make. So I, I agree that, completely. Yep. Yep. I found that rather refreshing. I like it natural, yes. I, I'm i preaching not to use uh, artificial things like yes. makeup and stuff. And uh, lots of girls were offended because for them it was... Um, well, yes, they have to look pretty. Uh, I mean, if uh, birds use uh, makeup, why, not hu why shouldn't humans? Because it's natural for the birds, so it should be natural for humans to use makeup. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, for, for women, uh, it's, um, deception is, is very f profoundly somewhere inside their, their design, like the Maya, and they were really offended because, um, but my, my, my daughter say, he, she was like one years old, or maybe one and a half, she would already be so attracted to makeup, so attracted to the, any idea of making herself even prettier, right? She was already mm -hmm. pretty. She would already move very uh, attractively, but she would look for artificial ways to even make it even more attractive. So, so it's art which is somewhere embedded in the. It, it's not cultural. It's not cultural. It's embedded in the design. So, mm -hmm. but still, I like it natural. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. And, and on the on the other hand. Uh, I have now a crush on a Russian, a young Russian singer, uh, okay. Varvara Visber, Barbara Visber, Varvara Visber. But mm -hmm. she's an artist, like a um, trained theatrical artist. And yeah. all she does is artificial. Mm -hmm. You can see how she makes it. It's, it's all made. It's all made. There is lots of makeup. It's all, all a theatrical action, act, right? So... Mm -hmm. So I don't know, but uh, it's done so well, and there is still there is a talent shining through. It's it's done with the talent. Oh, of course, that's without the talent, all everything else would be secondary. Everything else is secondary. The talent is what shines through. So yeah, and she is a, yeah icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah, she is an extraterrestrial, clearly. Like, and she she even does galactic languages. So in her art, she is a popular singer, and she would plug in a galactic language there. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another guy in, out in Europe, Russia area that does sound effects and singing and all put, puts it all together to make a very unique performance. And he, he's just, uh, he has a real long name. I can't remember what it is, but he won, um, several contests 
but he's so unique and unusual. He'll start off with a bird sound and then the sound of wings and buzzing, and then he'll have a, a, a galactic language in there, and then all of a sudden you will hear him uh, uh, do a do like to toning, and oh, it's amazing. So how do I find him? Huh? How can I find him? He would be, he went, he's on, you, oh, you know how America has talent? Okay. Oh, he would be on, uh, Russia has talent. He would be on, he, he was on several of the ones over there. The Russian has talent or uh, Slovenia has talent. Somewhere over there in that area, he was on their talent show. Okay. So, okay. And mm. now, ask has, around. If I ask my a, Russian friends, they will, on Facebook. They should be able to recognize him. And he he's amazing. Uh, when he starts, everybody becomes immediately quiet, and everything he does is amazing. Okay. And he makes sounds and sings and speaks languages, and, and 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 that's all part of this performance, and it's incredible. I have the same talent. When I start talking, everybody else starts talking. No, no. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, so, no, no. I, 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 there is something on my sound which makes people co uncomfortable. Basically, I started singing uh, and I put on Facebook my songs, basically. I, uh, I did lots of poetry and now I'm making music and making them into the songs and I that was I spent like last two three weeks doing my songs and uh, publishing them, and also I formed um, a Russian um, online song club, and it's doing great. Basically, I was the first one. Basically, we used Hukula format except we are doing singing. Uh, like okay. uh, we do circle, people take turns doing singing on the guitar, and uh, until oh, no. then it was uh, festivals. In, f in physical festivals, but I was the first one when COVID hit was to realize, hey, we can do it uh, every Sunday on uh, online, and Zoom surprisingly is getting we are getting better in using the microphone. So some of the singers actually sound pretty decently. I mean the the sound transmission. So so that's a big part of my excitement. We I'm singing, people listening. And every time I'm seeing, I see the, the response, like there is a curve, somebody else singing, and then me like down, and then I stop and, and it goes back to normal. So I, I clearly see that something in my sound makes people really uncomfortable. What, what, but do you do the Native American Indian singing? No, I'm doing pretty much classical Russian folk style. Oh, okay. But, but uh, guitar singing, but... Um, I got, basically, I need to find my sound so people at least are not repulsed. repulsed. I can't imagine them being repulsed by your voice. <laughs> I can't imagine that, but... I can okay. see the curve. I see the curve. It's, it's clearly something about... My songs are also sad, so that, that is another reason. I know, they're pretty pessimistic. Also, what about Sam? Sad, pessimistic. Oh, oh your songs are pessimistic. Yeah, I like, you know, life comes to the end. I'm here missing the life. Life goes by and I have no place in it. Something like that. <laughs> I think that's some, I think you feel that way sometimes. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty depressed. Yeah. So that shines through. Yeah, I, I think that you do feel that way. So I'm, I'm not surprised that that's the kind of songs you're attracted to. I am too. I feel like I don't, I, I have songs that I'm attracted to that are very sad. In fact, my very favorite, favorite songs are depressing songs. Like, um, I Can't Make You Love Me If You Don't, and um, uh, Broken Together is another one of my all-time favorites, but it's a sad, it's, it's, it's a pretty, it has some hope in it, but it's a basically very sad song, you know? So some of the songs that I write are very sad. And, uh, you know, like, um, uh, Take the Wind from My 
lungs and thing, things of that, you know, things of, <laughs> that seem very, very sad and depressing. But that's inspiration to me is because I went through a great portion of my life that was very, very depressed. So I, I was thinking that um, people who are into suicide have a great time now. <laughs> They're having a great time. <laughs> I'm not sure about that, but okay. I okay. mean, they, they, they did have a nerve to kill themselves. Now they have a like, perfect opportunity. Yeah, now they're, it's like, oh my God, I have to stay alone, <laughs> home with all my fr friends and fa with all my family. I need to kill myself. So, anyway. Yeah, my favorite song is uh, Because the Sky is Blue. I know, it's pretty pretty bright, though. It's pretty bright. There is a lot of high energy there. Good. But yeah, in, in, in songs, I um, allow myself to, to express the emotions which otherwise are repressed. Like, I'm faking, faking good all day long, and then when I'm singing, I allow to express the emotion. Yes. And that's where it comes out. Yeah, I, of course. I came across a book... It was just be at the beginning of the virus. It wasn't serious. The virus wasn't serious. The pandemic wasn't big yet. Uh, and I was crying all the, all, all the way through the book. It is um, by a field tuning by Eileen. By a field tuning by Eileen McCusick. Yeah, McCusick. And by field tuning. By a field tuning. Great book. And it has nothing about crying. It's not an emotional book. It is how you tune into the energies. But uh, she is using a fork. Let me show you. A tuning fork. A yeah, tuning fork? Uh, here it is. Ay, 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 ay. Sorry. That's okay. All right. So she's using a tuning fork. Like here is a tuning fork, and I yes. should be able to hear it. Yes. Yes, I hear oh, it. La 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 oh, la 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 Anyway, uh, so she, I, she's not chanting, I, I'm chanting, but she's using a tuning fork and you feel the vibration of the tuning fork in the hand and that right. vibration activates some energy patterns and as you go outside of the client, outside of the patient, you feel um, the energy is outside. So it can go like two meters away, three meters away, you still will feel certain energies and basically the energies on the close to the body are recent traumas and energies far from the body are traumas from the past and childhood traumas are about six feet away from the body and um, as you feel them you work on them and you basically bring all the traumas back to your core and recycle and that works great and um, she has a lot of following. And I had personal confirmation. I tried on someone else when we were like still were able to do it uh, with people. And it worked. I, I, I located the trauma. The, the trauma on the right is from the father's side. The trauma on the left uh, is from the mother's side. I located the trauma and it was a profound, real profound trauma of the person in the childhood. So... So there was a clear, I, I tried like seven people and one out of seven, I was able to clearly feel it and uh, she confirmed. She d nearly died and uh, it, and she lost family, so it was a big deal. Uh, so I was crying and nicely I connected now to Eileen, so um, uh, that is a even personal connection. Good. I have to get a tuning fork. What, what, where would you get a tuning fork like that? I will send one to you. You'll send one? Yeah. 
128 hertz i like the sound it's a little too low i like that that's nice uh it's called ohm sound it's basically the yes i like exactly what i thought too i said that sounds like ohm foundation of the universe um yes sounds like ohm the the voice of the sun so yes it's beautiful so but anyway um, well, we're, I can't believe it's a 117 already. Do you, do you want to channel someone today? Uh, yeah, um, I think our conversation can be published. I don't think we did too much of the discussion of the nudity, so I think it would be okay. Okay. Do you mind? Because I, in the middle of the conversation, I thought that it's nice for people to hear it because it's, uh, it had a nice, um, nice vibe to it. Well, we didn't say anything bad about nudity, but anyway, um, yeah, <laughs> fine. Right. That's fine for me. Yeah, uh, just a nice discussion is is always good, and I feel that uh, right now people need to talk to each other and really communicate because this is a time when we need uh, a soul connection, so that when we come back from the coronavirus, there is strong connections uh, with friends and family and others outside of the home. It's a, a very important thing to have these strong connections. Right. And everything and, will be pretty much different after that. It will be cleaned up. Yes, there will be a lot of differences. Uh, there, the world will be a very, very different place when this is all over with. And sadly, it won't be a place you'll recognize immediately, I don't think. Post-apocalyptic world. A little bit. Mad Max. I would say that in a total post-apocalyptic scenario, but in some ways, yes. In some I, ways. I don't know. I, I tune myself to the positive side of it. And yes, I see a lot good. of opportunity there. Yeah, okay. excellent. I'm glad you, that is beautiful because we need to do that. We need to do that. Yeah, but Varvara Visber, the Russian singer, she is very young, like, I don't know, 30 maybe. 13? Uh, 30, 30. Oh, 30? Maybe 28. But uh, people around here, it's it's a very different generation. I was crying thinking that that generation is actually like really good. They are tuned into the high dimension and um, they are now coming to their front stage basically, to the center stage. I believe, I yes. just I, I, I saw so much junk in Russia. And she's singing popular music, so she's singing junk too. Like, but uh, there is a great vibe, even in that beat, in that tune. There is a great vibe of the young generation, which, which is so different. Yes. So they come out like flowers after the winter. Mm -hmm. Or after, yeah. In in San Diego, there is uh, normally the hills are yellow here now everything is so green everything like like we are like tropical forest lots of lots of green grass nice grass and stuff like leaves the the nature likes it a lot like the panic and sadness created lots of rain and we have lots of rain the whole time of the pandemic and uh, the nature likes it yes mother earth is healing uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Mother Earth is the sky is healing because there's less traffic. The Earth is healing. There's less traffic and things on the on the Earth as well. Uh, less chemical use. A lot of things. Mother Earth is actually healing while it, during this period. And people realize that everything they did was non-essential. <laughs> yes, I'm thinking that a lot of non-essential activity will be stopped. Or they'll stop themselves from it. 
All right, so the invitation today would be Maharal was pretty good. Basically, I want to find out about the Lucifer and about um, the adversary. Yeah, adversary. How do you call them? Adversary, adversary. I don't know. Adversary. Adversary. Yeah, because uh, that conspiracy theory, conspir the conspiracy theory implies that there is there are humans that have a conspiracy. And yes. when I studied Russian history, it looks like the humans on top, they didn't agree with each other. So the conspiracy implies that they agree and they have some secret plan. And the history shows that they don't have a secret plan, that something else above them has, has a secret plan. And individual players on the top are as lost as, uh, as at the bottom. So that's my main question. So who is uh, organizing that conspiracy? Is it really like humans or something above? Mm, interesting thought process. Yes. So adversary is a can be a person. Adversary is a is not a person. Okay, adversary. It's an action. Yeah. Adversary. Yeah. So if um, Maharal is good, an archangel would be great. Um, I don't mind speaking to Kuf or any other other blue blue avians. Okay, then let's see who's around right now. Um, it might take my meditation might be just slightly longer because I make I make sure that I'm ta attaching to the right person, the right thing, right entity. All right. All right. Okay. Let's see who's coming. You heard all the names. What was the first name? Maharal of Prague. Maharal. Maharal of Prague. Is he the one that made the golem? Yep. All right. My relative. I'm I'm his uh, distant descendant. Yes. All right. Very well. All right. I'll see you later. Thank you. <laughs>